Relief print is the earliest and most enduring of all print techniques since artists continue to use this media in their work today. While woodcuts were first seen in 19th century China, Western artists have made woodcut prints since the 14th century. Relief print is a general term for those printmaking techniques which include woodcut, linoleum cut, letterpress, rubber, and metal stamping. In this technique, the artist sketches a composition on a block of material, then cuts away pieces from the surface, leaving a raised surface which will receive the ink. A roller then is used to apply the ink to this raised surface, and the image is transferred to paper with a press or by hand burnishing or rubbing. Since the recessed cutaway areas do not receive ink, they appear white on the printed image. Relief prints are characterized by bold, dark, light contrasts and impress into the paper of the inked lines. In this video, you will learn a one color linoleum print. This is a mounted linoleum. You will be using your flex cut tools. You'll have a registration board. You should have your paper torn down to the correct size. Then you'll need a Sharpie, your blender marker, a pencil, a color pencil, your Conte crayon, ink, brayer, a hand burnisher, or spoon, a brush, or a broom, tape, the other burnisher, different materials like nails and screws, and your drawing. The drawing should emphasize in black sharpie line where you will have the inked surface. The white area will be carved away. You will have three different types of tools in your kit. In your kit, you will find a handle and four tools. There's a gouge, a U-shaped tool, and two V-shaped tools. You will begin by pushing the metal nib into the handle. Each tool has a different size nib, meaning the top. Make sure when you carve, you do not carve toward yourself. The V is categorized by making lines. The U is more organic. The gouge takes away materials, as well as you can use your X-Acto for finer line. You can also use a hammer and a nail or screw or anything that abrades the surface. So when you're not using them, please put them away. Since they are delicate, even though they're made of steel, and also you don't want to cut yourself. Please put the sharp side away from your hand. So this is called a bench hook. A bench hook is one of the ways that can hold your block while you're cutting. You do not have to have one. You can use your registration board instead. Notice that I've built up the cardboard 
so that it is the same exact size as the block. This is a barren. And this also you can use to carve with. It's just a rug material um, so that it won't your block won't slip. When you have your drawing complete, you just have to have it in black and white line. For our purposes, I'm going to show you two different transfer techniques on a piece of wood, since it will be easier for you to see. I have a Xerox, as well as I have the original drawing. What you're going to want to do is take your Conte and push it across the surface of the back of the drawing. This basically is creating a carbon transfer. Make sure that when you are doing your drawings, you remember one, that they should be sized correctly, and two, they will be mirror image. All printmaking techniques except for screen printing will always be mirror image. So keep this in consideration, especially if you're using any text. Now you're going to place your drawing on top of the block. I would suggest probably using a piece of tape to tape it down. Now take a sharp pencil and you're going to trace along the lines. You can also just um, go ahead and directly draw right onto the block as well. Or just start carving. But here, I'm just going to show you how to do this. It's really easy. Once you finish tracing, you're going to want to go over the lines with a black Sharpie marker because eventually it will smear and the conte will disappear. If you're finding after you put the Sharpie down on the block and the conte is still smearing, what you can do is let the Sharpie dry and use some oil just to lightly take off the Conte. Notice that I'm peeking underneath so that I can see if I am done with the transfer. You can see it works really well, like the lines really transfer pretty evenly. You do not have to add all of the different details because you're going to add that from just visually from your drawing too. So there you are, that's a very brief transfer. Now I'm gonna go over it with a Sharpie so that when I actually start to carve, I will know exactly where to carve. And remember, whatever you carve is going to be below the surface, meaning that it will not print. So in this video, I am not carving for you. I've already pre-carved a block for you. One of the best things for you to do is experiment with the carving first. So you can take a white eraser and actually just carve into that. Um, do not carve on the mounted side of the linoleum. It will hurt your tools. But what's nice about the linoleum is it is really easy to carve. If it's stiff, you can use a hair dryer to loosen it up as well. So now I'm going to transfer this with a solvent transfer. You can watch the solvent transfer video to understand more about that. Quickly, I'll show you using my blender marker, make sure you're in a ventilated space. This has a chemical in it that is toxic and will hurt your head. Now I'm slowly using the burnisher or the blender marker and burnishing it on. You can only use a laser print for this. No other printer will work. So you're just gonna slowly build up the information um, because the acetone in the pen evaporates. So I have a couple of different ones because I use them all the time. Notice this one's 
not been used today so it's very very um, crisp giving a lot of the material so what's nice about a solvent transfer as well is you can use this um, on paper as well as any porous material so here I'm just going over this and then one of the things I encourage you to do again is to experiment with your tools in the next video with reductive carving, I will carve for you just because it is important for you to see the entire process. Please do watch the solvent transfer video as well. You'll have more information under your belt that way. So there you go. So it transferred really nicely. Now go over it with a Sharpie, Sharpie marker and then throw the transfer away and do not keep it near you because it smells. Again, I'm just quickly going over it because the real artwork is really in the carving after you um, transfer your drawing. You want to make sure that you vacillate line weight. So use all of your tools. Um, you always want to carve away from yourself. Stand when carving. And um, again, the V tool is nice because it gives really crisp lines. The U tool is nice because it gives really kind of more organic lines. Usually what I'll do is I will go around all the lines and with an X-Acto to make kind of a valley. Do not carve toward the exterior part of the line because you're going to have skips and jumps when you're working. So as you're carving, what I encourage people to do also is to take a piece of paper, put it on top of your block. Then I like to use color pencil because I can see it better. I chose red so you could see it. And then I'm basically just going over the surface doing what's called a frottage or a rubbing. Um, and then you can see where you've carved or if additionally you need to make more carvings. Also, when you're printing, what since you're using water-based ink, you can always do a print, see what it looks like, wash it away if you don't like how it came out with the ink, and carve back into it. Take your time with this because this is one of the most important parts of your project is actually the carving. With my carving, I did play a lot with organic line. You can use cross hatching. I'll be giving you also a presentation on all of the different techniques you can play with with your lines. And so see this, like the frottage me method really works. You can really see, start to see how the drawing, um, or I'm sorry, the carving is starting to evolve. And you can just use computer paper for this. It doesn't have to be fancy. Uh, it's just a good way. Also, I often tell people to run their hands across the surface of the block. And you can kind of see the lines there. It's hard because you're not directly in front of it. but. If you run your hands also across the block, you'll feel the raised versus um, incised surfaces. So before printing, you always want to clean off your block. Those little chips can get into your ink and then create little dust marks and it looks really bad and it will get through your entire palette. So I like to either vacuum dust um, with a broom, specifically for relief, or with a just a really nice brush. I've also used some hammer and nails into the piece. If you don't have them, it doesn't matter. It's just another thing I thought I'd show you. One of the things also is be aware that if it's a very, very, very fine line, it can fill in over time when you're printing. I like to use Q-tips in order to kind of deduct into those spaces. So. 
what you're going to do now, once you've finished your carving, you're going to set up an ink area. So again, I've built this up so that the block is now the same height. That way, when you register your prints, it will be a whole lot easier. So you can see that the paper was torn down exactly to the registration block and exactly where I want it to be. One thing you can do is just leave a little bit of, um, don't make the, the chips of the cardboard go all the way up to the top of the block because you might have troubles actually getting the um, ink to transfer in, uh, on the edges where it is butted up against the block. Again, I just have a baron out there just to show you what it looks like. Have all of your paper torn down. Um, I always like to have a piece of newsprint and then I like to put the paper face down onto the newsprint because it's one less action for you to do when printing. So now when I'm inking, I always put a piece of tape down so that I don't, the block doesn't shift. So I'm going to be using two different colors. Remember, you're also required to show me your palette. So I'm using a pewter and a black together. You're going to want to always, like the pewter you'll think is the light color, so you're adding it into the dark. Again, mix thoroughly so that you do not see streaks throughout the entire ink. So you just want to mix it with your palette knife and you can see I'm picking it up, putting it down. So just mixing it a bunch until it's a consistent look. If you make your ink one day, then you'll have to, of course, remix it when you take it out of the tub. Here I'm putting my ribbon down so it's even. I put my palette knife to the side. Then I have my clean brayer. I'm inking up the surface. And what you want, again, as you already know, a very consistent surface. So I chose the pewter also just so you could see the palette easier than pure black. Make sure that your brayer looks consistent along the entire surface and also matches the consistency of your palette. So you're going to just start to ink up. I like to remember the passes because over time, it will give you a consistent print every time in the addition, which is something that you have to consider. Also, every time you put ink down, again, you want to make sure that you regenerate it with the ink on your palette. Your first print will always be lighter. What I recommend you do is to take newsprint, and here it's a consistent surface. What you don't want to do is stop the rolling in mid-roll because then you'll have what's called a brayer mark, which I will show you. Um, so here I'm actually taping down my registration. Um, then I'm taking my paper so I know that it's the fibrous side down, not the waxy side. Pushing my hand across the surface so that the ink basically quote-unquote glues the paper to it. So the first print is not going to be as deep as the second print. With all relief, it doesn't matter what material you're working with, it will always need to be built up. So again, for your first one, I would do it on newsprint or even computer paper until you get the consistency that you want. Don't waste your nice paper, especially if you're doing tests, which you should be doing at first. So here I'm using, um, this is a rice spoon. I'm using it across the entire surface. Again, I'm not using the tip. I'm using the whole entire um, spoon. I like to sometimes pick up the, um, just the corner, just to peek to see again, is it transferring? You're going to see now that you can see through the back of it too. So you can kind of remember, always make sure to do all the corners and you want to consistently go over the entire surface so that everything transfers onto the paper.
and there's the first print. It's a little bit light because again, the impression has, it doesn't have as much ink. See those little white spots? Those are um, dust marks. It's basically the linoleum got into my ink. So you wanna basically either have a tweezer to take that up and or you just need to make new ink. So here now I'm deciding to put down a deeper look um, palette just so you can see it again in a different color, even though it's still black and pewter. But the tonality will shift. You can see already it's darker. In this, you can also use the extender base to make more transparent um, looks. So one of the things with this project is really just, I would like you to experiment with your palette. So, you know, try different colors um, in addition to just black and white. This is a non-traditional edition because I don't expect you to have all the same color ink, but I do expect you to have the same exact um, consistency and look of a clean print. Okay, now I'm taking it out of my registration. You can also ink up on your registration board. I just didn't want it to get messy. Again, pushing across the board and you can kind of you can now see it's getting darker. So again, everywhere that is carved will be white. And here you can see a brayer mark. See that um, line across? So you don't want that. You want to make sure you evenly disperse the ink. So before you print, you just roll over it once and then maybe twice and then you to make sure you don't get the brayer mark in your um, inking. Now I'm putting it down onto my registration system and making sure that the paper is aligned properly, pushing my hand across. And you can see already see through the surface of the um, the paper, you can already start to see the ink. I'm just shifting to a different spoon for no other reason than I am. So now you can see as I'm going across the surface evenly that it's starting to show even through the paper what the image will look like. And make sure you change your direction. Don't always go in the same direction because that way you will get an even surface. Um, and you'll hit all parts of the print. What's nice about the spoon is also you can exaggerate areas too if you wanted. So play around with that too. So here's the next print. So again, I'm still building it up. Right there is the brayer mark that I made. And it only takes about five minutes, I think, to dry. So um, in the next video, when you start to do reductive, please do not print wet on wet. So that is your first introduction to a relief block.